Good morning. My name is Steven Estrada, and I am so excited and honored to be here with all of you today. I've been asked to share my experiences with my own cancer diagnosis, immunotherapy treatment, and the importance of self-advocacy as it pertains to the treatment and management of your cancer. Just over two years ago, when I was 28, I was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. To say I knew nothing about cancer at that point in my life would be a gross understatement. In fact, finding out there was no stage five came as a total shock. How could I, an otherwise healthy 28-year-old man who exercised and ate healthfully, have end-stage cancer? The answer to that came in the form of a simple blood test. Along with my cancer diagnosis, I was also told I had a genetic condition called Lynch syndrome. Lynch syndrome basically meant that I had some messed up genes that had no way of repairing themselves, basically making me a ticking time bomb for cancer. In general, Lynch takes away the fear of, I wonder if I will ever get cancer, and instead replaces it with the fear of, when will I get cancer? The answer to that, for me, was apparently at the ripe old age of 28. So, there I was, young and in serious danger of dying quickly. I was rushed into emergency surgery to remove a large part of my colon, along with the primary tumor. During the surgery, it was confirmed that the tumor not only broke through my colon's wall, but had spread to my mesentery, an unlikely and dangerous place for cancer to metastasize. My prognosis was so grim, my surgeon put a letter on my door instructing nurses and visitors to not discuss my diagnosis with me. After I recovered from my surgery, I went through six months of very aggressive chemo. I went from a strong, active 170-pound man to a frail, weak 110-pound shell. At the end of my first-line chemo, my mesenteric tumor shrank enough to make me a candidate for something called a nanoknife procedure. Nanoknife was explained to me as a fairly new procedure only used when tumors are in a highly sensitive and dangerous area. Rods would be inserted into my tumor, and electromagnetic waves would be pumped through the rods. This would cause microscopic holes in the tumor cell, causing them to leak out all their contents, thus killing the tumor and giving me approximately two years of being cancer-free. Now, I understood this was not a cure. It was simply a way of treading water before another plan could be formed. I signed off on the nanoknife procedure, and my unconventional fight with cancer truly started. The nanoknife procedure quickly turned complicated. Once inside of me, my surgeon realized a tumor had attached itself to my small intestine and my gallbladder. What was supposed to be a frying of the tumor quickly turned into something much, much more. I underwent a gallbladder removal, a small intestine and mesenteric resection, a stomach bypass, and an intestinal re rerouting. I was told everything went beautifully and I should be cancer free. I was sent home to recover in peace after about spending a week in the hospital. Now, anyone who knows me really well knows that when I do something, I tend to go all out. So not only did I not recover peacefully, instead I started bleeding internally. An ambulance had to be called to my home in a horrible blizzard where they found me pale, weak, and barely with a pulse. I was rushed to a local hospital where I received eight blood transfusion in, in an effort to stabilize me. This resulted in a week-long stay in ICU where I suffered from many seizures due to a lack of blood. At this point, I was more than sure I would never see the outside of that hospital alive. Somehow, I made it out of there. I was supposed to start maintenance chemo once I was strong enough, but my quick brush with death made me reconsider our plan of action. I needed to know more about what was happening inside of me. I was so tired of not knowing anything about my cancer other than what my oncologist was very briefly telling me. So I began to read, and I read a lot. It is so important for those of us with cancer to not be afraid of all the information that's out there. The more we know, the more we can have an informed discussion with our team of doctors. I truly believe that the more we know about our own cancer, the more doors open up for us. Self-advocacy will get you far in the cancer world. Through my research, I found that the maintenance chemo my oncologist wanted me on was not beneficial to those of us with Lynch syndrome. In fact, the drug had been noted as possibly detrimental in some cases. Shouldn't my oncologist have known this? Probably. But she was my one oncologist, and I was one of possibly hundreds of patients she saw a week. How could I expect her to know all the nuances of colon cancer when she treats every form of cancer every day? I knew at that moment I needed an oncologist who not only specialized in colon cancer, but in Lynch syndrome. I was so angry that my oncologist didn't have the knowledge I thought she should have, 
But now I realize she was doing her best and I really couldn't rely on any doctor to have all the answers. Doctors are such wonderful people, but I had to remind myself that they are still human. Humans with immense pressure placed on them from a day-to-day -day basis. It was then that I made the decision to learn as much as I could about Lynn syndrome and my personal cancer. I wanted to bring more to the table during the appointments. I wanted to ask good questions and learn. I wanted to save my own life. My research led me to the University of Colorado, where my current oncologist, Dr. Wells Messersmith, works. I met him after my nano knife procedure and filled him in on what was going on with me. At this point, two months after nano knife, I was assumed cancer free. Unfortunately, one morning, I woke up in a familiar and excruciating pain where the tumor was. A quick CT scan confirmed what I already knew. Nanonife, my unconven unconventional answer to the cancer trying to kill me, the procedure that was being hailed as a great, incredible weapon against cancer, the surgery that almost ended my life was a complete and utter failure. Now, the tumor was just pissed and growing. Little did I know that this was possibly the biggest blessing I could have asked for. Because the tumor was alive, well, and measurable, Dr. Messersmith suggested I quickly enroll in a phase one clinical trial with something called immunotherapy. A very quick Google search unearthed a massive amount of articles calling immunotherapy the biggest medical breakthrough since the discovery of antibiotics. At that moment, I knew I needed in. I'm gonna pause for a minute and talk quickly about my cancer. I would talk about any of your cancers, but the fact is, I don't know anything about your own personal cancer. Even if you have stage four colon cancer with mets to your mesentery like I do, I have no idea what makes your cancer tick. But it's vitally important that you know this information. Genetic testing of your tumor is quickly becoming one of the biggest weapons we have against cancer. Looking past the cancer origin site, the colon, the breast, skin, lung, and looking into the cells, into the actual DNA of your cancer is imperative. Once you know what drives your cancer, you can carefully select your next step. Because of my Lynch, my cancer is what we call MSI high. This basically means my cancer has more mutations than other forms of sporadic colon cancer. Because of this, my body already recognizes some of those bad mutations and wants to fight, but my immune system just couldn't figure out how to do that. I would never be equipped with this information if it wasn't for advances in genomic sequencing. So I encourage anyone who has not had some sort of genetic testing on their tumor, please speak with your oncologist about it. Once I started the immunotherapy trial, I knew something very strange and very good was happening on the inside. The drug, atezolizumab, was incredibly easy to tolerate and within weeks, literally weeks, I felt well. My pain and fatigue were replaced with strength and hope. I went from a tiny 110 pounds to 130 in roughly a month and a half. Whatever was happening on the inside of my body was finally starting to manifest itself on the outside. The drug removed the blinders on my immune system that cancer had placed on it, and my cancer was the number one target. And now, over a year later on the trial, here I stand before you, alive, healthy, active, and well. My tumor is still shrinking, and I live my life on my terms with cancer as a mere afterthought. Had I not done my own research, had I not had the courage to be my own advocate and seek out another oncologist, I would most certainly not be alive today. So I encourage all of those with cancer to truly take the reins and be your own lifesaver. Don't wait until it's too late to start looking into trials, please. The time to look is now. Save the trial number, print off the trial description and take that information to your oncologist. Don't wait for them to bring this information to you. They're very, very busy people, and things fall through the cracks all the time. During these last two years, I've noticed that those who do the best and live the longest tend to be those who are well-informed and active in their treatment planning. I often tell newly diagnosed patients that they are the coach of their cancer care team. Your oncologist is the quarterback, but it is up to you to run the team, so you must step up and play your role well to have a shot at winning this game. Keep in mind, you will hear a lot of no's as you present information to your team. But for every 20 no's, there's bound to be at least one yes. And sometimes, like me, all you need is that one yes. I asked Dr. Messersmith what he'd like me to say to you all today. His response was simple. Get your MSI testing done. MSI stands for microsatellite instability. I would go into more depth, but this information evades even me. 
while this test is becoming more common, up to 50% of newly diagnosed patients aren't tested for MSI. This can truly reshape your treatment path and open doors to the exciting world of immunotherapy. MSI can be found across a variety of cancers, so I encourage all of you to have this discussion with your oncologist. If MSI doesn't apply to your cancer, ask about known biomarkers that may shed light on your cancer's weak spots. These tests and biomarkers are so important, but sometimes only the well-informed know what to ask. Being my own advocate has gotten me very far, but to say I've had the strength to do this all on my own would not be true. Having a solid support system in place is critical to surviving cancer. No one should have to go through any of this alone. I've had my incredible partner of eight years navigating this storm with me, but that simply wasn't enough. Cancer was too big, too quickly for both of us to handle. I believe an important aspect of self-advocacy is having a support group or support family to talk with and bounce ideas off of. For me, the online colorectal cancer support group Colon Town filled this void. For me, Colon Town is a unique group of thousands of patients, caregivers, doctors, and more, all providing feedback on the disease, treatments, side effects, emotional support, and clinical trials. Colon Town's support family got, through, got me through some of the darkest moments of my life while giving my care partner a support system of his own. There may not be something like Colon Town for other cancers, but that shouldn't stop you from networking with those who have similar diagnoses to your own. The amount of knowledge you gain from talking to others is invaluable. Knowing what to expect from a surgery, chemo, or a trial gives you the upper hand and will only serve you well. So that is my last bit of advice for all of you. Find your support group and be as active as you can. If you can't find what you need, start your own group. Technology makes this massively easy. Not only will you find the support you need, but your experiences may reshape someone else's life as well. I hope that by sharing my story, I can give you all hope. Hope that cancer as we know it may soon end. Hope that a terminal diagnosis may become more of a chronic illness like HIV or diabetes. Hope that even after a stage four diagnosis, we may still live a rich and full life. Cancer obliterated the world that I knew. But thanks to a knowledgeable and caring oncologist, my own research, a clinical trial, and my own inability to accept the word no, I'm still here. I beg each of you with this horrible disease to research all you can, ask as many questions as you can, and be an active participant in the management and treatment of your disease. If you're stage four, please do not view clinical trials as your last shot. The healthier you are, the better off you may be to handle the rigorous trial path. There is never a good time to be diagnosed with cancer, but right now may be the best time for a shot at living with cancer. I want to thank the Cancer Research Institute for hosting this day of community, discussion, and knowledge. Every event I've ever attended like this one leaves everyone with a renewed sense of hope, peace, and fight. I know today will be no different. Thank you to the doctors and medical professionals who are here and who tirelessly work to beat cancer. Thank you so much to the caregivers who suffer silently as their loved ones undergo tremendous hardship, pain, and change. To the caregivers, please remember to take care of yourselves. Find a support group that can lift you up. I know you all need just as much community and support as we, the patients, do. Finally, thank you to those of you here today who are living with cancer. I hope today sheds some light on the exciting direction cancer care is heading. I'll be around all day, so please feel free to say hi and ask me anything. I'm here to support you and learn from all of you. Remember, I am living proof that knowledge and self-advocacy truly are powerful. Thank you all for being here today and for allowing me to share a little bit of my ongoing story. God bless. Mm -hmm.